So once everyone has tape, uh, that might not be long enough. This is what I want you to do. Lay down one of the tape, stick it side down on the table. Uh, make sure to leave some length for you to be able to handle it with. So don't, you know, tape it all the way down. You are going to, you know, untape it soon. So make sure you have a little bit of that. And lay down the second tape right on top of it. Uh, but, you know, before we do this, uh, you guys saw the interaction between the two tapes, right? Were they repulsive, attractive, repulsive? Okay, good. So now what we are doing is uh, stick the tape on top of each other on the table, leave a little bit of length, and after having stuck them on the table, I want you to peel it off one at a time. Peel off one and peel off the other. Please be careful so that it doesn't touch your, you know, run up to your hand. Now try to bring the two tapes together, um, non-sticky side together. So Crystal, what kind of interaction are you seeing? They are now attractive, right? Yeah, in fact, if anything, the, the attraction is stronger than the repulsion ever was. So um, this is a very simple example of electric phenomena. And what are, our goal of trying to dis, uh, describe electricity now is we want to come up with a description that would uh, explain both of these things. But with the electric force, the other non-contact force, what you're saying is that it can be attractive and it can be repulsive. And in this particular case, with the same two objects, you could arrange them in such a way that they were repulsive initially, but then after some interaction, they are now attractive. So the description using electric charge is a way to describe exactly how that might be happening. So, um, so, to, so that's why we start out with the description of a positive and negative charge. With masses, there's only one mass, uh, or one type of mass, positive masses. I can't even imagine what negative masses are. <laughs> uh, so I guess, yeah, I can't imagine what negative masses are, at least in vacuum. So with these positive and negative charges, now you have more of a, more fun combinations in interaction. As in, you can have, let me just uh, describe all those combinations. You can have a positive charge interacting with another positive charge. You can have a negative charge interacting with another negative charge. Or now you can mix them up. You can have a positive charge interacting with a negative charge or a negative charge with a positive charge. Now I think uh, uh, many of you know this rule already, but let's go over just to be sure. When you have um, two positive charges interacting or two negative charges interacting, do you know if it should be repulsive or attractive interaction? Repulsive, you guys might have seen it in science class. Or this sometimes goes by the phrase, uh, likes repel. Um, what about in these two scenarios? Either positive charge interacting with the negative or negative with the positive. Should be attractive, yeah. It goes by the phrase, opposites attract. I mean, you know, um, just like with the statement regarding Newton's third law, sometimes people take this and we need to Mean, make it mean something entirely different. But um, at least with electric charges, um, so the like charges, two positive charges will repel each other, and two negative charges will repel each other. And the opposite, a positive charge will attract a negative charge, negative charge will attract a positive charge. Um, so this is a way of trying to explain what we just saw. Let's see if uh, um, this, uh, these rules make sense with what you just saw. So what you just did, initially you started out by rolling out a piece of tape, or two pieces of tape, rather. You have a roll of tape here, and what you've done is you've taken up, um, you've taken a piece, so one piece here, and you've taken another piece earlier. So when you look at these two tapes, two pieces of tape, do you think they will have the same charge or different charge? Like they, they got rolled out the same way, right? You have no reason to think that they would have a different charge. 
unless you know this uh, uh, something weird going on is with the tape. So because they are being both rolled out at the <laughs> being rolled out the same way, you have no reason to think they wouldn't have the same charge. And the interaction you see between them, the, are, is it that consistent with them having the same charge? Right? Repulsion, at least according to this rule we are trying to say. Now, do you know enough to say whether they both have positive charge or they both have negative charge? Not really. They could both be positive, they could both be negative, and they would both show repulsion. And in fact, here's the thing about the signs of electric charge. Um, it's arbitrarily assigned. And in fact, when we start doing electric circuit, you will realize that the way we have the signs assigned is very inconvenient. You can blame Benjamin Franklin for that. <laughs> but it's an arbitrary assignment. And it comes down to what we can tell are whether these are same or opposite charges. So for now, let me just label them as positive. I don't actually know if they will be positive charge. But let's say they have some amount of positive charges. Sorry, I drew too much. They have some amount of positive charge, but you know, not too much because uh, we saw that, especially compared to the attraction that you will see soon, that the repulsion you see now is not that strong. Yep. And the next part of what we did is uh, we put these two pieces of tape together. So uh, here's the bottom piece of the tape. And here's the upper piece of the tape. And we peeled off one at a time. And um, let me just do it again. All of you have done this once, but uh, let me do it again. I can't do it on my table because last semester I tried it and it didn't work. It only works on these tables. Something about the property of table matters. <laughs> um, so I'm not saying that this happens all the time. I'm just saying you know this happens in this specific situation, and that's the explanation we are coming up with for it. So after having pulled this off, um, you see that these two pieces of tape now attract each other. So if you're trying to make sense of this rule, what do we now need to be able to say? to say that, oh, these two pieces of tape now attract each other. Like, what do we need to be able to say about the charges of the, each of the tape? So the tape that's up here and the tape that's down here, what do we need to be able to say? Yeah, the one is positive and one is negative. They somehow have opposite charges. Let's say, um, all right, let's say this is, has a positive charge. And let's say the bottom one ended up with a negative charge. Then here's the question that uh, you would end up asking. Where did the negative charges show up from? There, was, there were no negative charges anywhere here. Like where did they come from? It could have come from the table, which is why, hmm. I guess it could have come from the table. I want to try to, wonder if I can do it this way. Can you do it on the board or? No, I want to try it this way. So, I'm trying to touch the table as little as possible. So I haven't actually tried this before, so I don't know if this will work or not. Let me just have the tapes touching each other, um, you know, without touching anything else. So it's just tape on tape. I wish I had tried this before, but until Pedro suggested it, I hadn't thought of it. Uh, let me just uh, fold this over so that I can unpeel it later. So it's tape on tape. All right. And let me peel them from each other. OK, they are peeled. They are tracked. So the table wasn't necessary. All right, so where did the negative charge come from? Hmm? From the other tape. So what this is showing is maybe a transfer of charges. 
So in this picture, you could say it this way. Um, so I drew four charges for each of them. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four positive charge. But maybe the real picture is more complicated than this. Instead of these having these four charges, this is more like a four net positive charge. As in within this tape, there's a collection of positive and negative. Positive and negative. Positive and negative. Oh, sorry. Let me just do it for only one of them. I imagine similar picture for the other tape. But so since you know positive and negative will cancel each other out, you wouldn't know if this had uh, both positive and negative charges. It just had an excess of positive charges or a net positive charge. And in the process of peeling one of the tapes over, the process might involve all these negative charges that I have not drawn being transferred over to the other tape. That would result in the other tape having a net negative charge. And the original, the other, the top tape ending with an even greater excess of positive charge. Does this, all of this kind of make sense? I mean, well, most of you have a normal science education background. So, but, so what I'm trying to say is that uh, this is the description of how we describe charges interacting and um, and so sort of this makes sense here. And here, I've actually introduced an idea without directly referring to it. It's uh, something that is so intuitive to many of us that um, I, it's some semesters I've actually forgotten to mention it. So the idea that you are seeing illustrated here is what might be called conservation of charge. Does this sound like a strange concept to people, or it's something that you would have assumed? Most of the people who know something about science is already familiar with the conservation of mass, conservation of energy. So the idea that charges are conserved seems sort of natural, right? The, as natural as like if I have some piece of paper, then this piece of paper will sort of like it won't simply disappear. It can change the form. I, I can burn it and turn it into carbon dioxide, but what's here can simply disappear. And um, with the char conservation of charge, it's, uh, um, it's even more uh, fundamental than you know, conservation of pieces of paper, because pieces of paper can change the form. Turns out these charges that we are referring to, they are properties of the very elementary structure of matter. So uh, whatever charge there are, the net charge will always remain the same. You can transfer some negative charge from one object to the other so that it results in separation of charges, positive and negative, and you can see them interacting. But when you look at the total amount of charge, negative charges cannot simply disappear, and the same thing with the positive charge. 